So the embargo has finally lifted for the new RX 6000 series cards from AMD and here we have the new Radeon RX 6800 with us here, something that probably you guys want to compare with the more affordable 3070 from NVIDIA. So looking at the reference card, we can see that it's actually a lot different than the previous gen which comes with a more solid box I would say but because this is the reference edition you will probably not be able to get it locally or anywhere else so it doesn't really matter it's just for us to show you guys the performance of this card so the box is pretty simple thin just like your usual graphics card and they actually have this piece of cardboard with a foam down here which I have no idea why they did this and here lies the card itself laying in the middle of a piece of foam for extra protection during shipping starting off with the design you can see that the card sports three axial fan design here something very similar to what we've seen on ASOS card or even the latest generation of the RX30 series Founders Edition cards. So the triple fan here is meant to give you a bit more extra airflow to cool down the card as compared to dual fan designs. But if we look at the design closer, it does resemble the previous gen RTX 20 series Founder Editions card, but that's just from the side. So the overall design of the card is pretty solid and from here we can see that you will barely get any kind of sagging if you install this in a case because of the overall design here so which is a good thing but because it's very unlikely for most people to get their hands on the reference card you might as well wait for you know the cards from partners the board partners which will have better cooling of course and probably a fancier design than the reference cards we have right here so for the RX 6800, you will need two pieces of 8-pin PCIe power to power up the card. We don't know whether the partners will follow the same, but from what we look here, it's very likely that the partner will be featuring similar design for the PCIe power connectors, which is two pieces of 8-pin connectors like what we have here. As for the display output, the RX 6800 sports HDMI 2.1 to DisplayPort 1.4 and a USB Type-C port right here. Well, not many of us will actually use the Type-C port right here for display purpose and NVIDIA has actually removed the Type-C from their current gen RTX 30 series card as compared to what we've seen on the RTX 20 series. So even if you don't use Type-C display for gaming or whatever purpose you want to do for, you can still use it for you know, your USB-C device or maybe charge your phone with this if your motherboard doesn't come with a Type-C port. So yeah, that's pretty much it about the design of this RX 6800 we have here. And before we move into the performance numbers, here are the list of specs we are using for the test.
And of course, you can get even better performance on the RX 6800, but that will depend on the components you'll be using because AMD did introduce a rather new technology from them, which is called the Smart Access Memory. But the requirement for you to utilize this feature requires a Ryzen 5000 series processor, a 500 series motherboard, and either of the RX 6000 Radeon graphics card. So this has somewhat limit these new features of Smart Access Memory to their new products which is quite limited for those who are still using older version of you know, the AMD processors or their older motherboards. So I've actually tried this out of curiosity. I'm using the older Ryzen 3000 series CPU or specifically the Ryzen 9 3900X on the X570 motherboard and yes, turns out that the features that's only available for the smart access memory is not present the moment I plug in the older Ryzen CPUs. So looking at the numbers we have gathered throughout the entire week, I can say the RX 6800 here actually exceeds my expectation because not only that, it performs better than the RTX 3070 in most games and it doesn't run as hot as the previous gen RX 5000 series. And for those of you who are concerned about the temperature, we've actually run firmark tests on this card for almost half a day, yes. And the peak temperature we've recorded for this card is actually at 80 degrees Celsius, which is a very big improvement over the previous gen because the previous gen, as many of you who have known, runs really hot. Now, before we jump directly into the conclusion of the RX 6800 being the card you should buy at this time, we should actually look at the ray tracing performance it can deliver as well. Although it actually overpowered the RTX 3070 in terms of raw performance, the ray tracing performance still requires some work because the RTX 30 series still have the advantage over the ray tracing performance as of now. When we run games with ray tracing features available, we set it at the highest possible settings so we can see just how well it can perform. But as of now, I would say that the RX 6800 is only suitable for 1080p gaming when it involves ray tracing. Seriously, if you go what, 1440p, you'll start to struggle. So if you're looking for high frame rates with ray tracing enabled, the RTX 30 series card will still have the advantage because of DLSS. So for AMD to have their own alternative for DLSS, it'll probably take some time, maybe next year. So if you can actually wait for that, this is probably something you can consider for. But if we look at the price of the RX 6800, which is at 549 US, it's pretty much justified because it's, it's priced slightly higher than the RTX 3070 and it performs a bit more better in terms of raw performance. So since AMD announced their new RX 6000 series card, I mean, everyone is jumping on, not everyone, a lot of people is jumping on the hype train just to wait for the card to be available in the market. So if we compare to pretty much most of the previous release Radeon cards, things just went south most of the time. But this time, they actually did it pretty well because if we look at the numbers, not just raw performance, AMD has really done something really good this time. Even though they didn't really manage to keep up with NVIDIA in terms of the ray tracing performance, but one thing to take note is that they, AMD, actually bring the ray tracing features to the table within just one year after the announcement. So as for me, I think that AMD has done a pretty good job this time in bringing out in all the good features and performance they can squeeze into this compact card right here. So I'll give this card a thumbs up this time and do let us know what you think about the new Radeon cards from AMD and if you're one of those who already purchased a card, let us know what you think in the comment down below. So that's pretty much it for our video today and I'll see you guys in the next video.